For nearly four centuries, Harvard has been known for many great things, as America's first college, as the alma mater of eight presidents, as the most fertile of ground for new ideas and cutting edge research. Yet now, in this moment, Harvard has become known for a truly terrible thing, for anti-Semitism, for leading a 21st century American resurgence of one of the world's most ancient and retrograde prejudices. And this is in large part because of the words and action as well as the silence and inaction of President Claudine Gay. We have all now seen the shocking testimony from last week, but to borrow a phrase from Dr. Gay, we need to also look at the context. The context of Harvard having the very worst ranking in the entire country for protecting free speech. The context of President Gay initially refusing to condemn the Hamas terrorist attack and then refusing to condemn the student groups that blamed Israel. The context of Harvard's woefully inadequate measures to protect Jewish students both before October 7th, but especially after, to the point that at the hearing, President Gay would refuse to even answer the question as to whether a Jewish student can feel safe and welcome on her campus. That Harvard has declined to remove President Gay even after Penn forced out its president speaks volumes about the singular failures of that university. Yet Harvard also offers a broader window into what ails higher education in our country. This is a moment of reckoning for American higher education. Our universities cost too much, deliver too little value to graduates, and have become the most intolerant places in American life. Mr. Speaker, we have seen the evil and hatred of anti-Semitism find its voice across American college and university campuses, and we have seen the full force of Jewish hatred grow as student organizations continue to celebrate the horrific October 7th terrorist attacks. These institutions have become hate factories that are quick to allow the spread of anti-Semitism, but slow to condemn it, if at all. Harvard President Claudine Gay even said calling for the genocide of Jewish students depends on the context when it comes to violating the university's code of conduct. Let me be clear, today the faces of modern anti-Semitism in American education are Harvard, UPenn, MIT. These institutions have gone from elite to elitist. At Harvard, if you use the wrong pronouns, that's a violation of their code of conduct, code of conduct, but violently targeting Jewish students and calling for the genocide of the Jewish people, that's acceptable Harvard conduct. The history of the Holocaust reminds us uh, what will happen when hatred is met by silence. We cannot stand by why students feel threatened. It's more than a discussion, Mr. Speaker. It's a call to action. And that's why I'm proud to support Representative Stefanik's resolution condemning anti-Semitism in institutions of higher learning and specifically condemning Presidents McGill, Gay, and Kornbluth for failing to denounce the calls for genocide on their campuses 17 times. It was asked 17 times. They failed the question. Mr. Speaker, it bears repeating anti-Semitism is not activism. Last week, America watched in bewilderment as the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and Penn were unable to say if calls for a genocide of Jews violated their harassment and bullying policy. Let's not forget campus leaders go after microaggressions, but suddenly, when it comes to anti-Semitism, they chose to remain silent. At that same hearing, I asked Harvard's president how she could rectify cracking down on faculty for saying there are biologically two genders, but maintain that calling for genocide is protected speech. The reality is, at these universities, free speech only applies to certain people at certain times, which is why these schools rank at the bottom of scorecards that judge freedom of speech. The inability of these presidents to condemn anti-Semitic rhetoric only encourages further harassment and jeopardizes the safety of Jewish students and ultimately all. They need to be held to account. I encourage adoption of the resolution. With issues as critical as mitigating anti-Semitism and protecting our Jewish community, it is vital that we speak today with moral clarity. Just days ago, in a hearing in the House Education and Workforce Committee, we heard shocking testimony from the presidents of what were once our most esteemed educational institutions. 
Each one of these institutions have more than 100 years of history educating our youth. One, Harvard University, is closing in on 400 years of history. These schools have an embarrassment of riches, billions of dollars in annual revenue, much of it from federal funds, billions more in endowments, no, tens of billions of dollars in endowments. They have the resources to reach any educational goal. When pressed on the solution to the problem of anti-Semitism, each of them testified that education was, in fact, the solution. Education is supposed to be the solution to anti-Semitism. Yet with all of that history, with all of those resources, with the esteem of our society and the world, these universities are ground zero for rampant, virulent, obscene, and inhuman anti-Semitism. The hearings last week exposed not only the lack of moral leadership at these schools, it exposed a sickness in the culture of our, of our elite universities. If calling for the murder and genocide of fellow students for the crime of being Jewish is not immediately and completely repugnant, then there is no moral compass at the heart of these institutions.